the, the guy's name is Ken Klippenstein. Robert, he got permanently or temporarily suspended from Twitter for having published a link to his Substack in which he published the full J.D. Vance dossier that was allegedly, at least according to the Justice Department, the result of a, of a hack and a theft from the Donald Trump campaign from an Iranian-backed organization or Iranian entity that was shopped around to the mainstream media, but none of them took it and published it, I, either out of altruism or they didn't think it met the standards of journalism, which I would find very curious. Klippenstein publishes a link to the full unredacted memo or dosage on his Substack, and gets banned from Twitter. The explanation, from what I understand, is the publication of, of hacked materials and doxing, because that was the basis for banning the link of the Hunter Biden laptop story, except that was not the result of a hack at all. That was Hunter Biden surrendering his computer to a, a computer repair shop. And apparently, Ken Klippenstein didn't think it was necessary to redact a substantial portion of J.D. Vance's social security number and his physical address, which Klippenstein says you can get elsewhere on the internet, so no doxing for me. I, th I think the idiot did it on purpose. I think he knew he was breaking the rules because he deliberately linked it from Twitter, knowing that he couldn't publish it on Twitter. The idea, I know the, how you feel about addresses, they're public and maybe not disclosing private information, but this is in the wake of two failed assassination attempts on Donald Trump, and now you're saying, here's where the guy's physical address is. Oh, but you could find it elsewhere. And the social security number, what, fair application of reasonable rules or unjustified and or weaponizing because he's anti-Trump. All right, let's break this down. Ken Klippenstein publishes a link to his Substack, where he has the J.D. Vance dossier. The platform suspends him for it. Elon Musk's platform, no less. You'd think Mr. Free Speech Absolutist would have something to say here, but crickets. Funny how that works, huh? The man who's built his brand on never shutting up about free speech is dead silent when it comes to a journalist being censored on his own platform. Makes you wonder, is Elon really about free speech or just when it suits him? Now let's talk about what actually happened. Ken didn't post the actual dossier on the platform. He posted a link to his Substack. Big difference, but they banned him anyway. Why? Because supposedly it violated the platform's rules against hacked materials and releasing personal information. That's their explanation. Let's be real, though. The dossier itself is insignificant. There's nothing earth-shattering here. The personal info, addresses, and a partial social security number. Yeah, not great. But guess what? The last four digits were redacted and those addresses already public. So what's the big deal? Barnes didn't even say Klippenstein did anything wrong. All the fuss over info you can already find online. Does it violate some platform rule? Maybe. But is it truly harmful? Doesn't seem like it. Now, Viva is making a point about Klippenstein knowing he was pushing the limits. Maybe. But honestly, is that a reason to censor him? He wasn't breaking any laws. He's not been arrested, not even sued. So why the ban? It's a simple answer. They didn't like it. And who's behind that decision? Elon Musk, the guy who supposedly runs this free speech paradise. Yeah, right. So I want to hear from you. Did Ken actually do anything wrong here? He didn't post anything that wasn't already out there. And yet he's being censored like this. This is some massive crime. Where's the consistency, Elon? Where's that free speech absolutism you won't shut up about? I, I just don't know why he couldn't have redacted that. It's one thing to publish hack materials. That's one set of issues. But it, what I think pushed it over the line for X was publishing the social security number and, and his personal home address. It's like, yeah, I mean, I get you can say, well, maybe that's out there, but why do you need to publish it? Why can't you redact that information? People forget Julian Assange went to great lengths to redact all kinds of private information. They tried to put him in prison and did lock him up for a period of time until they finally cut a deal. So he's back uh, in Australia. But he went to great lengths to protect people's life and well-being. He, he was not careless or reckless. He wanted to expose government secrets, not expose private people's private information. They went to great extents to do that, contrary to what the media tried to spin and what the government tried to claim. I just don't understand. I think he did it because he was going to get a lot more traffic. He made a tactical choice. 
he would get a lot more traffic if he included the person's personal information. In. That's why I, he I, did it. So I have no sympathy for him under those circumstances. Barnes brings up a valid point here. Why not just redact the personal details? I get it. It's a question a lot of people might ask, but let's be honest. The addresses were already public and the last four digits of the social security number were blacked out. So what's really the harm here? It's not like Ken just dumped out the man's private life for the world to see. And Barnes mentions Julian Assange. Sure, Assange was careful to redact private info while exposing government secrets, but comparing that situation to this, this is, isn't some grand reveal of state secrets. It's a routine opposition research dossier. There's no life-threatening classified intel here. The document itself is a snooze. So yeah, could Ken have redacted more? Probably. Did he, did he do it for clicks? Absolutely. But let's not pretend like this was reckless, life-altering exposure. If Elon Musk really cares about free speech and protecting private info, there are way bigger issues to tackle than a half-redacted public address and some minor personal details that are already floating around online. I'm a little more cynical. I think you do it and post the address to remind everybody who might have forgotten or who doesn't know that you can find most people's home addresses relatively easily. That's what I would call a bona fide dog whistle, a, a malicious one at that. I was inclined to think that he was treated wrongly or, or unfairly in this. And then Crystal Ball comes out and she's like, what are, and when she took a position in support of him, I knew that I was probably in the wrong because everything she says is a filthy lie and disingenuous. And she came out and said, he redacted it and then republished it. He's still banned. Whoa, where are the free speech uh, advocates now? Um, what, was there anything? I mean, I, I haven't read the dossier, not because I'm not interested in hearing bad things, but what, what is there in that opposition research that's new to anybody? I mean, I, I, everybody knew that he made some anti-Trump comments in 2016, that he has since come around. What's in this dossier that would, it's, I don't think people declined the story because they didn't trust the source. I just think there was nothing in there other than personal info. It's a reminder, Trump sticks to this, but his campaign team doesn't. Uh, never in writing, always in cash. I've been part of that in the past. I discourage it ever being in writing, unless you want it distributed or leaked. I will say I'm deeply suspect of the Iranians cover story. When has Iran done this before? Never. Iran's <laughs> world renowned for hacking? Hmm. Who, who is the most likely source of this information? Is it really Iran or is this Spygate 2.0, Russiagate 2.0, where they're using Iran as the convenient cover story? And remember, they wanted to blame Iran for the assassination attempt. They'd arrested someone who was supposedly conspiring with Iran to assassinate Trump. They, I think they'd planned on blaming Iran if the assassination had been successful. So I'm not buying the Iran story. Viva's cynicism is warranted here. Sure, Klippenstein posted the address, but let's not pretend like he's broadcasting some secret info. Most of this stuff is easily accessible online. The releasing personal information argument feels like a stretch. I mean, we all know how simple it is to find someone's home address if you really want to. So calling this a malicious dog whistle, that's a bit much. The bigger issue here isn't the address, it's about free speech. And once again, where are the free speech advocates now that Elon Musk's platform is pulling the same stunt? Now, what about the dossier itself? Let's be real. It's not groundbreaking. There's nothing new in here. People knew about J.D. Vance's old anti-Trump comments. Big deal. The real problem here isn't the content of the document. It's the fact that it's being suppressed like it's some huge revelation. It's all personal info that doesn't change anything, yet they're acting like it's a national security threat. And then there's this foreign-backed hack story. Come on, who's really buying that? Barnes is right to be skeptical. This has all the hallmarks of another political cover story, just like we've seen with high-profile scandals. They just swapped in a new villain to fit the narrative. A foreign entity? Seriously? There are far more likely sources for this kind of information. Barnes is playing it safe here, but we all know who's really benefiting from this spin, and it's not the group they're blaming. 
now that you say it out loud, the first time they did this, they blamed a foreign agent for the leaked materials, Russia for WikiLeaks. I, I may be mistaken, but I don't think anyone actually believes it was Russia. They couldn't accuse Russia the second time around for two reasons. They've already done it. And why would Russia hack Trump if they've already been alleging that Russia wants to help Trump? So Iran is a good scapegoat on this Russiagate 2.0. They blamed Iran, Iran rather than China because they're more focused on Iran and they want to manage the relationship with China rather than escalate. They needed a believable, credible source for the alleged hacking. And in the, you know, okay, we can't use Russia a second time, so let's use Iran. Well, Number three works. would have been maybe Venezuela. <laughs> but the Cubans have never successfully hacked anybody, so they would have thrown the Cubans on there. But it screams bogus. It, it screams a deep state hack with a disguised source. They would have leaked it sooner if it had anything inflammatory. Instead, there's not a lot there. It's just a bunch of do over nothing. And, th and that's why it hasn't, there isn't a media suddenly discovered their ethics and not, and not printing and publish hacked materials based on foreign election interference. It's because there wasn't anything that good. They can hint that there's something really serious in there, but say our ethics compel us to not disclose it and thus allow this insinuation to be out there in the public eye without realizing it's garbage. I tend to agree. Put this stuff in writing. I don't know why they do these dossiers. I get vetting a candidate. You do that behind the scenes, confidentially, and you don't reduce any of it to writing. Trump didn't need it in writing. You could just tell Trump, this is what we got. Boom, boom. Here's the risk. You, you don't put that stuff in writing. It'll be like innuendo. Out when the FBI does a background search, that there's all kinds of rumors, gossip, and nonsense stories in there. They're constantly used to derail Supreme Court nominees based on what we now know to be utterly bogus stories. It's a trap is what it is. Viva's right. They used Russia the first time, and now they're running the same playbook, swapping in a foreign entity. It's political scandal 2.0, just with a different villain to suit the narrative. Why a foreign entity? Because, as Barnes points out, they need a scapegoat that fits the current agenda. They couldn't use Russia again, so another country was next on the list. This is how it works. You just substitute one bad actor for another, depending on the political climate. But let's be real, this group didn't do this. It screams of a government insider hack trying to pin this on a foreign entity to push a bigger agenda. They want Trump world to escalate things against this foreign country. And this story serves that purpose. And the media, they didn't suddenly grow a conscience and decide not to publish because of ethics. No, they're not printing it because there's nothing in the dossier worth printing. This isn't about protecting sensitive information. It's about controlling the narrative. They want people to believe there's some bombshell hidden away, but in reality, it's just unfounded. If there was anything truly damaging in there, they'd have leaked it already. But instead, we get this vague insinuation with no real substance behind it. All right, I've said my piece, now it's your turn. Is this just another censorship stunt or a whole lot of nothing? Drop your hottest take in the comments. I can handle it. And while you're at it, obliterate that like button. Because the more you do, the more we throw a wrench in the algorithm. Subscribe if you're into real talk. Let's make sure they can't ignore the conversation.